friend, we have Bo Krasik, director and president of Believe. How are you doing today? Not bad. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And uh, we were speaking just before uh, sitting down here that I actually visited uh, Believe for my first time about a month ago or so. We were uh, invited out there and Shane gives a tour. Uh, it was, wasn't what I expected. It, it wasn't. And it, it, was, it, was, it was actually above expectations where I looked at some of the cannabis he was growing there. It looked really, really nice. <laughs> it's one of those underrated stories we kind of kept quiet, but Shane's a rock star. He's been doing that yeah. for such a long time, over 20 years of experience. Um, he's really been able to grow from in the last 18 months since we got our actual cultivation license, you know, uh, just in terms of yields and, you know, making the atmosphere a lot better inside and the climate controls and yeah. the fees that he's using. And, you know, people are quite surprised when they come and see it. Even, even some of the underground guys from before, you know, I've, I've shown them pictures and you know, yeah. they're quite impressed because there's that stigma between what LPs can do and what they can do. And everybody's quite impressed. There's a bit of a talk in BC about him right now. He's getting some notoriety. So yeah. uh, super proud to have him. He's one of the original founders. So, and, and in that exact point you just said there, actually, I started seeing that sentiment all over my Facebook or my different Twitter feeds, whatever it be, where your connoisseurs, they secretly, like, or not so secretly, do not want to buy cannabis from LPs because they don't think they can grow. But then some of these LPs are coming out and they, they have these buds and people are like, wow, this, this came from LP? It's funny that stigma was there. I didn't really fully realize until after the legalization. That's the, a huge topic right now. It absolutely is. I mean, I think everybody learned over some time and period of time that, uh, you know, how to actually, you know, make, you know, or grow good cannabis. Um, maybe they've switched their growers. Maybe they've changed their techniques. Everybody learned. I think everybody just kind of, you know, head on first and said, we want to be part of this business. We'll figure it out later. Yeah. Some have, some haven't. Uh, We've always been there and we're just continuing to improve, right? Yeah. So there's definitely a couple guys out there that know what they're doing and we, we applaud them for that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and speaking of improvements, uh, one of the things that Shane was telling me that I'm sure you can elaborate on was uh, each grow that they've had over the last you know, months and, and all this time since you guys have had your cultivation license, you've been increasing your, your pounds per light. Uh, quite drastically, he was telling me. It, it, it definitely. So about 18 months ago, he was getting about 1.2 pounds per light uh, to the point where now he's getting 4.2 pounds a light. Yeah. Uh, in investor talk and, you know, capital market stock, that's about, you know, 720 grams per square foot under canopy uh, per year. Yeah. Right. And, and, that, and, he, and he still thinks he can, you know, grow that. I didn't believe him a couple of times. I actually had to go and count myself, which, you know, you wouldn't yeah. see someone like me do that. But I definitely went out there and had to double check, as you said, you know, I was up till 12 o'clock just going over it four times. He's like, these numbers are right. I go like, okay, fair yeah, enough. That's more than double, double the yield, uh, just over, you know, tweaking things, working on different aspects. So yeah. I, I, one of the things that was very evident when we went there, there's a, a culture, everyone we, we came across, uh, whether it be students who are learning uh, how to grow, whether it be uh, Shane himself, or there's another uh, master grower there. I'm uh, alluding his name. Um, uh, there's a couple guys, there's, there's, there's Charlie, there's Evan, there's, uh, Ah, he's going to hate me for it, but I, I, I it's going to throw yeah. my tongue. But I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll it's, mention it's the him. interview. It's the interview thing. When you come yeah. to the interview, sometimes like, I know this name. I know it. But no, he no I'm just really bad with names. That's, yeah. that's, that's, I'm, no, I'm, I'm known for that. I'm good with numbers. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm bad with names. But yeah, no, they, they've, you know, Shane learns from them as much as they learn from him. I yeah. mean, all these, all the, most of them have come from, uh, you know, from Niagara College. Right. Yeah. We've, uh, we've, we've, we partner up with them. We, we scoop their best talent. Um, and some of these guys are, you know, are willing to go to British Columbia for Abbotsford and Chilliwack expansion in yeah. their facility. Some of them really want to stick with the greenhouse. So they're going into our London facility. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, you know, we learn from them. They learn from us. Uh, you know, and Shane really has a great management style with these, with these guys. And I think they respect them and respects them back. And, you know, um, it, it, it helps with that culture, you know, when you come to work and you just actually want to improve every single day. It's not just a job. It's like you said, yeah. it's a culture thing for us. And you can, right? it was noticeable. Uh, it was noticeable when you get in there. Uh, I don't just say that lightly. I mean, I've, I've watched a lot of different uh, hospitality companies or corporate companies, whatever it be, and you, you could tell almost immediately uh, the type of culture that's there, the way that people just walk, the way they talk to one another, the way when you ask them a question about one of the plants, they were so eager to tell you, oh, no, the, I've been working on this for a while. Like, you know, it was nice to see. Uh, yeah, and I, I guess that's coming through with this great yield that you guys are getting, but also there's, uh, I mean, I'll watch all the different social medias to see how people are liking certain uh, companies and certain plants. I believe has been getting some, some good reviews on their, on their cannabis. And it's, it's interesting because it's still early, right? It's so early in this stage it is. that it's, it's, it is. It, it's fascinating uh, I mean, as we're growing. We don't, we don't have a single strain that's going to win out in this industry yet, in the legal industry, right? We've heard of different yeah. ones that are very popular, um, you know, 
throughout the illicit market or the gray area market, whatever you want to call it, right, before yeah. legalization. But I, I think, you know, it's a it's an even playing ground for everybody. Everybody can market their strains. And at the end of the day, marketing is only a part of it. We learned early on, and that's the that's the part that our growth team says, look, it's about the plant, yeah. right? And if, you, if you're talking about dry product and, you know, just smoking the flower or consuming the flower, you, you have to know what you're doing. You have to bring that old school culture into this whole new corporate world, right? So yeah. it's, it's tough, right? You have a lot of SOPs to follow, yeah. right? You, you, you know, Health Canada is, uh, you know, breathing over you. Uh, They're every very week. stringent. Yeah, oh exactly. my goodness. So, you know, it, it was, that, was, that was the initial difficulty, just kind of pairing that up with, you know, what, are, you know, what, what the requirements are. Yep. Um, you know, once you get past that, then you can just, uh, you know, keep rolling into progression, right? And that's, I think that's where we're at. And, uh, we'll, you know, can't wait to see what they do in our, you know, in our expansion facilities. I think they're going to do really well because it's, it's that modular approach we took uh, from day one, right? Yeah. And why don't we talk about that for a moment? Um, because what, uh, and what caught me off guard, actually, uh, to be very honest, was the fact that very soon uh, you guys are growing to conservatively, you were saying earlier, 150,000 uh, kilograms uh, a year. That's a significant amount of cannabis. That's through three locations? That's, well, it's, it's four. Okay. Uh, it's actually, so the BC locations are split between two properties in Chilliwack and Abbotsford. Um, they're going to total about, you know, 870,000 square foot feet of indoor grow. It's going to yeah. be the largest in the world for indoor grow. They're all actually, you know, as you saw in our facility, in the Hamilton yeah. facility, they're all 2,000 square foot rooms, about 50 lights a pop. Yeah. And it's going to be 10 buildings that are just going to be, you know, uh, exactly the same. Yeah. Our partners are building that out up there. Um, look, I mean, it's, uh, it's easy to manage. And uh, so that's two facilities, and then we have the London facility is going to be just our greenhouse. And nice. it's mostly going to be for extraction because we're doing some really cool stuff with our extract materials. Uh, we don't believe that, you know, buying a machine, extracting all through, you know, carbon-based CO2s or, you know, ethanol. We use ethanol, for example. We don't yeah. believe that's the final product that people should be consuming. Uh, it's, it, should be the, you know, it should be the ease of consumption, right? So yeah. our whole motto is, I don't want to change the way you live. I want to change the way you feel. Yeah. Right, so we're working on some really cool stuff around water solubility. We have it. We haven't shown it yet. We're filing patents around that. Um, you know, we don't know what the end product's going to be. Is it going to be a drink? Is it going to be an edible gummy bear, yeah. a Listerine strip, uh, pill? We, we don't Sweet know, right? Eyes. So we're working on the precursors. Uh, we're going to find out what people are going to like. You know, if if we give you something you can put into your drink or your, your you know, cookies. Yeah. Um, you can, you know, we'll figure out what people consume it most for, and then we'll say, look, maybe we can make that product, or we can partner with somebody to make that product, right? Yeah. We, we don't want to jump into, you know, making a beer, um, you know, making a Coca-Cola or anything like that. Although those guys are big players and they have a big, you know, marketing branding behind them, you know, we're not going to compete with them. Yeah. We want to provide them with something that they can use. You know, and we can all make margin along the way. Right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And behind us as well, uh, they've been going in and out. It's just showing the different plants you have, a uh, video that your team has put together, uh, just showing the process and, uh, and some, of the, some of the handiwork. So we'll let that play in the, in the background <laughs> yeah. as we're, as we're some of our, that, that was some of our earlier work. That's one of our rock star scientists, Peter Chan, who's developed yeah. some water-soluble um, products as well. So we're quite excited about it. Right he's on topic then. <laughs> right, exactly. And he's actually in France right now, uh, you know, holding a conference on what, we, what we're doing. So it's, yeah. uh, he's speaking at a conference. So it's quite interesting, right? Nice. Uh, yeah, and, and like you said, right, and what's interesting though is that, yeah, these products are allowed in the States, and that's something that Canada has to really realize that, you know, we're letting these American companies uh, really, really start uh, growing. And that's a good thing. Like, as, as a, an enthusiast for the plant, I love to see that. But in Canada, we're obviously limiting right now, but what we are allowed to do is the research side. We have a lot more ability to do research because our, it, it's now legal. So, uh, so legal um, for, for, for us to be able to work on. So. It's nice because it's like you said, are you going to go out and get a, a Pepsi or a Coke, some sort of beverage, and try to fight right. Coke? Or are you going to be like, hey, we've got the primo uh, products for you to be using in your drinks. That's how you're saying you want to be able to, or at least one of the ways you're going to be looking into One this. of the ways, right? One of the ways. I mean, we, we always look at full vertical integration, right? I mean, yeah. uh, if you look at it, I, you know, want to control everything, just like yeah. everybody else at our company does, right? Uh, but you can't. Yeah. Right. So you got to figure out how far can you take it, and you know where really where the marketing, branding, and manufacturing power of some of these bigger players are. Right. I mean, yeah. they have distribution. The biggest problem is though is how will some of these guys actually distribute the product when they don't have a license to do so? Right. I understand yeah. on the CBD side of things, um, which is you know gaining a lot of popularity, but on the psychoactive ingredients, you know, yeah. you still have to go through some of the L one of the LPs. Right. I mean. 
you know, yeah. Pepsi or Coca-Cola can sell to us. Yes, we yeah. can, right? So Correct. how yeah. does that partnership work? You know, we don't want to jump into it just yet. I think, you know, this is, you know, I keep saying this word and everybody does. It's a nascent industry. Yes, it is, yeah. right? Level playing ground as of October 17th. Exactly. Right. So we've done everything we could. You know, we caught yeah. up in terms of space and you know, you know, capacity. Yeah. Um, but then again, that's just that's just the first iteration of what you need to do. It's yeah. you know, have enough capacity to to support your supply chain. Will we buy off of other people or other countries? Absolutely, we will. I mean, we yeah. have we have over 60 hectares of land being developed in Colombia right now, which we yeah. have 51 percent ownership of. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't bring any of that stuff in. No, exactly. Right. We, at, at the point at this point in time eventually all this you know if it becomes commoditized all these big facilities they may not be profitable yeah. they may all have to go into derivative products which you know demand a higher margin once you really play with that bioavailability side of things you can actually i can actually give you a lot less from one gram of cannabis yeah. and make a lot more money off it but you'll still feel the same effect so why do you care exactly right so it, it has to develop right it's it's not it's not there yet but you know we caught up on you know the fundamentals now we're going after that you know big bang in terms of research and development of new products right so we're really excited yeah. about that one no and all those things are really interesting to hear and i appreciate it. but slide it a little bit more and change the tone a little bit uh something interesting happened a few days ago a seven to one stock split uh, what was the basis behind that and uh, i'm sure of all people you'd be the one to uh, to explain it um it was something we uh sort of battled with for a while. You know, originally, when we structured this company, we figured we have a tight share structure. Um, you know, fundamentally makes a lot of sense. Uh, however, the investor base is uh, mostly retail in the sector at this point in time. Uh, we were at a price point where the investor retailer, uh, retail investors did not, you know, you know, find the value in it, you know, between a dollar to two dollar stock. Uh, yeah. And the market cap wasn't big enough for, you know, any institutional guys to really get involved, you know, and, yeah. and take a significant position. So um, we looked at it and we said, hey, why don't we do a split? You know, we don't have enough shares out there. We, our volume is, you know, not dried up, but it wasn't as good as some of the other guys, and it's not as enticing. Yeah. So um, I think we did the right move. I mean, you, I think uh, yesterday you saw 17 and a half million shares trade hands. Yeah. Um, you know, we were the, the leader on the CSC. Uh, today, before I came in here, it was 4 million shares traded, right? So it gives people an opportunity to get in. Uh, it gives them uh, an opportunity to trade a little bit more. And I think it attracts a different type of investor that, that's looking for a bit of a better deal, right? Yeah. And it's nice, too, because a lot of people, it's funny, when I first started looking into cannabis stocks, everyone's like, oh, over 100 million shares are saying, like, oh, they're, they're so diluted, they're all this. But then you start realizing it's the ones who have over 100, 200, 300 million. Absolutely. They're the ones who have the liquidity. They're the ones who aren't being trapped by these other people. Like, it's a lot harder to take over when there's that many shares outstanding. And it's just you're able to eat up someone who's looking to sell some position because there's so much volume there. Yeah. So I, I'm actually trying to lean towards more companies who have over 200 million shares because yes. I know that I can buy and sell when I want to. <laughs> and, I, and again, it's, it's, it's my, you know, as a former investment banker, like it's in the capital markets guy, it's that whole mentality. Why have so much dilution? Why have 100 million plus shares outstanding? Yeah. And that's, that's what we went out with initially. And then we started realizing, like you said, um, you know, that liquidity, uh, providing liquidity for the investors is, is key right now. So. Yeah. That's what we went with. Uh, it's been successful so far. We hope it will. Uh, we have a lot of news to put out there, and uh, you know, guys will pick up on it. There's a lot more, uh, lot more share trading hands, right? So yeah, and it's interesting as well because I've been watching Believe over the last uh, month or so as a personal investor um, because I'm looking at a company that I think you guys are sitting around like 50 million uh, market cap at the time being, which yeah. I don't understand. Like it's crazy because you guys are about to get to very shortly. Uh, over 150,000 kilograms. I think it's fully funded. Am I getting it's, that correct? It's, it's fully funded. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's fully funded either on our own or through some partnerships. Yeah. Um, look, uh, when it's all said and done, uh, at wholesale levels of just dry cannabis, uh, we're looking to have about 477 million dollars in revenues per year, uh, and we're not stopping. Right. I mean, this yeah. this is just us saying, hey, we're here as well. Land and land acquisition and properties are not a problem in Canada. We have yeah. lots of it. Uh, so we, it took us, you know, less than six months to get all this done. Yeah. Uh, we were focused on what you saw back there before. It was just the product, research, innovation, and really honing in the art because we were waiting for this legalization to happen. We know what's yeah. going. We, we know what's coming. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it sounds like you've got a lot of the good pieces uh, put together. I'm really interested to see how uh, trading continues to work on, on your company, but also as these milestones start coming up, I think you guys are going to catch a few people off guard. So hopefully that's not me because I actually am just surprised. I'm, I'm an investor first. Right. Uh, absolutely. I'm looking to get a, a position personally uh, because I'm seeing this the type of aspects I want to see 
going into legalization where you want to find a company that's got a lower valuation. Uh, they, they may be undervalued. I'm not a financial advisor, so that's me personally saying it for right. myself. But just in general, these are the type of elements we're going to look for. I can't wait to, to have you on uh, again in the future as you continue to grow and we're watching this story uh, take shape uh, as we march into legalization or, or past it now. Uh, absolutely. Always glad to be here. All right. Well, appreciate it very much for your time, my good man. Thank you. Your stock can be found on the CSC uh, under BE. That's correct. Uh, if those who are looking uh, want to look a little bit further into Appreciate your time. Thank you. Absolutely.